All right, welcome to the Dark and Point Show on Elevated TV and Elevated TV Radio. My name is Daphne Matthew and Sylvania. You love to call me the Elevated One of Sports. And uh, it's been fun. I, I, I finally realized how much I miss to talk to the fans, how much I miss being on radio, and how much the excitement I get when I hear people talk, ask questions, and make contributions. You guys are brilliant. You guys are fantastic. And thank you for following the show on Elevated TV's YouTube channel and also on uh, Elevated TV Radio on www.elevatedtv.com dot com forward slash radio yes it's been fun it's been exciting uh this is the three and uh like you know the show is is the talking point show so whatever it is you feel like we should talk about or whatever contribution you have to to make in the beautiful world of sports mention it say it come on on board with it one way to get on board I get involved in this well there is a special whatsapp group that allows you to get in uh you know i can say we're still doing test transmission here and we're going to my mom will say start with what you have and start from where you are that's always something very very uh, deep in my head every time i think about doing anything and i see the obstacles that i face so you can go to you can follow us at elevated tv radio on twitter and then you will see the pinned post just click on the link there and join the whatsapp group to a process you would always be part of this show you drop a voice note and then we'll respond to your question that's the way to go about it as we progress we'll get to the point where you can phone in directly and other things and also join the conversation on twitter using the hashtag hashtag the talking point show and today we have a whole lot of people with different opinion different requests different questions that they want us to answer i want to say very big thank you to my producer mcdonald parashi is fantastic i mean if you if you watch the show on our youtube channel or you listen on our radio you will know that this guy is doing a great and mighty job but let's see the ground running straight away and uh, get your take yes you guys out there have been wonderful as well on the whatsapp group and you guys have also been very very disciplined except for some few people who come in to advertise things that are not needed but then we we fast and quickly kick them out as well so let's uh let me first say this that there is no such thing as one person knows it all. Uh, so I don't know it all, but I'm going to give my opinion. I'm entitled to my opinion, and I'm going to try as much as possible to make it an informed opinion. Having said that, though, let me also say this. Somebody sent me a message uh, privately on my own and asked me, when will I start giving betting tips? Okay, uh, at the beginning of this season, I said something on Twitter just before the season started. I think it was somewhere around uh, the first week of August before the season started. And I said that this season is going to be for the bet companies because the previous two seasons punters have really won a lot of money so i mean they also always win so it was common sense for me to know that football is going to change I, i'm one of those people who believe that football is rigged all over the world i'm one of those who believe it's not a conspiracy theory i mean i may not have fact to it but it's just something that i've seen over the years and you know that also guide my prediction so i i, I said before that this year People who do sports betting will lose a lot of money so that the betting companies can also have fun to run their business. But next season and the season after, punters will win a lot of money. Hold me by this word as I have said it because the Bayern Munich of this world, the Manchester Cities of this world, Real Madrid and FC, no, 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 FC Barcelona, Juventus and the rest of them will become strong again. And those are the things that really gives you consistency in terms of winning. So let's wait till that happen. But let's see the ground running and see who is our first caller of the day as we push the a conversation going so let's take uh, this one from Oloashan. Oloashan, what do you have to say this day my name is Oloashan. yeah my question is concerning the transfer of uh, our own uh, audion Igalo to manchester united though i can really see that the guy is really really ambitious to play for my you for him to go as far as cutting I mean, he, he, he's price so that he can join them. But what I want to know is, I want you to, I mean, share more light on this transfer. Do you think Odion Igalo will excel at my, my year? Or what is your own take about it? Thank you very much. 
All right. Uh, thank you very much, Olua Shemu. I'm tempted to take another voice, uh, another person talking. Uh, let me see what this person is going to say so that I could uh, bump them all together. I'm trying to make sure that there is consistency with the flow uh, so that I don't go answer one question and then the same question comes up again. Uh, let's hear from Timo today. Hello, Elevated TV Radio. Yeah. I, I greet Elevated. Well done. So this is not Timothy Dembo and I did for me Paja this time around also. I they won't ask something, I won't ask from the elegant one. First about the Igalo move to Man United. She elegate you feel say Igalo go fee do waiting go make Man United get into the top four and probably win the Europa League. And in case that won't happen, you feel say Man United go on sign Gallo fully on a not on a loan basis, say he go be their player. And then let me take another caller. Thank you very much, uh, Timothy Dango, the Inter Milan guy. How did it take me this long to know that you support Inter Milan? Uh, let me go to uh, my friend in Ikorudu and uh, also take his contribution on the show. Joseph, what do you have to say? Hello, Elegbete TV radio show. My name now Joseph. I recall from Orile. Oh, you are in Orile? Now, I want to talk about Igalo, where man you buy recently. Now, all the pundits all over the world, they say Igalo na panic buy. No be waiting they supposed buy. Fine. The main striker, Rashford, don't get injury. After Rashford don't get injury now, Igalo, I want to know now. Say Igalo they more better than Marshall. Or Marshall they more better than him. Because I know understand why all this point is the same a panic by but I would like to make you shed more light on that. Alright, from Oluwa Shell to Timothy Dembo and uh, my friend in Joseph in Uwili, let's deal with uh, these three questions first. Uh, every one of them are talking about Judo Joe Igalo. First uh, the meaning of the word panic buy is because uh, Rashford got injured. If Rashford did not get injured, Manchester United would not have bought another striker in January. So when pundits say panic buy, they are not referring to Igalo actually. They are referring to the circumstance that led to them buying Igalo. And then when you buy a player very, very late in the transfer market, it is seen it as a knee-jerk reaction or a panic buy actually. So that's the reason. Uh, for those of, uh, for Timothy Dembo and uh, the first guy who's, uh, who's asking, if he would deliver and then if he delivers let me let me even do with the first one if he delivers if he scores well would he permanent him i'm not god i can't tell you what will happen uh would he deliver i'm also not god uh but one thing i know like uh, the words of um precious emotionally this frame of the goal at in china is the same as the premiership and then the premiership is not a new league to him there was a time odio Yalu came to the premiership he started from the championship and people said uh, this is the, the the this is england he can't score goals like that in the championship in all competition he scored 28 is it 28 or 32 goals and then he came to the premiership they say he can't score he can't do this one this one we saw what he did he destroyed the, the defenders that, that were put in front of him. Once again, he's going to play. And if you look at the players he played with at Watford, compare them to the players at Manchester United, obviously, there's a remarkable difference. The only thing that is bad about this Manchester United right now is this team is not really playing. They're not playing to the full potential that they have. After the Manchester is playing like they are Shavin, the last years of Ashavin at Arsenal, very, very disconnected, very, very dis disinterested in the game of football. And then... Uh, Juan Bissaka is not a fantastic crosser of the ball, but he's a good defender. So, Manchester United need to play to the strength of their team. I, yeah, I like the fact that everybody talks about Bruno Fernandes as a good midfielder in the mode of post schools. But I've not really uh, focused on his... People have not really focused on his passing range, whether short passes or long passes. But one of the things that I've, I've said, if they can play a very good defensive midfielder behind a Pogba and Bruno Fernandes, that attack would play, would play very well. One of the things we need to also realize is that Igalo is a boxman. He's a fox in the box. He hardly go outside of the box to deliver. He, every once in a while he does. In his entire career, he's only scored one goal 
outside of the box. So it's not one of those players that you expect to shoot a goal outside of the box. Igala also does not score with his head. So those are dealing with his weaknesses. But if you put the ball to his foot, he knows his way to the goal very, very well. We did a uh, Igala score. Yes, I spoke to him a couple of days ago on Saturday actually, and I said to him, "I'm expecting 15 goals from you. You know that I'm asking for too much. People have played over 25 games this season, and the highest is 17 goals. All the other ones are in 13, 12, and 14. So expecting 15 goals from Igalo might be asking for too much but i think if he manages to get to 10 goals if he manages to get to 10 goals he's done very very well will they decide to permanent his deal this is what i think about manchester united i think manchester united are holding the fort are waiting for the next coach it might be massimo allegri it might be uh, mauricio pochettino or maybe they might tempt uh, Diego Simeone to come to Manchester United, one of these coaches. They are holding the fort, waiting for the next coach to come to decide what transfer would happen. Manchester United, I think, will be one of the teams that is most active in the next transfer market. Let's not forget that this is the Euro 2020 year. A lot of players will go to the Euros. So uh, one of the teams that will be very, very active will be Manchester United. But until then, uh, let's just keep it like that. Uh, uh, would Igalo score all the goals? I think he will score if, the, if he get the supply. But Manchester United attack have not been really getting the supply because mm -hmm, some of the players that they bring in, uh, green or whatever, doesn't really play the way you expect him to play. Some of those players are players who just run with the ball, but don't have the intelligent capacity to really pass the ball very well. Let's just hope that they can deliver on that. Thank you very much. I hope I've answered your question. Let's go to the next uh, caller on the show. And uh, it is Samson. Samson, what do you have to say? My name is Samson from Ikorodu. My question it's actually coming from the aspect of the Nigerian basketball team, the Tigers and the Tigress, whom we already know that they've booked their place in the coming uh, Summer Olympic Games. But if that is the case for the male team, I was thinking, is it possible for the NFF to copy one or two ideas from the NBF? Because I believe that one of the key to their qualification is as a sort of early preparation put in place. So I was just thinking, maybe it's possible. Thank you. All right, Samson. Uh, thank you very much about that one. I think you're very, very particular about basketball, and I love it. Would the, can the NFF take a leaf from the MBDF? If you look at it holistically, the NFF, in terms of Olympic football, have done better than any other federation in terms of going to the Olympic. The NFF can sit comfortably and tell you they won a gold in '96, which when they were NFA, they won silver in 2008, and just recently in Rio against all odds, I'm just led the team to win gold. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be winning every time, we shouldn't be qualifying every time. The female team have not really done well at the Olympics. But what I'm what, what I'm saying is taking a leaf. When you, I'm, I'm responding to your question of taking a leaf. I'm one person who really bashes the NFF. I'm actually led the NFF a lot but uh we did qualify yes it was due to lack of preparation it was due to taking things for granted uh, everybody who wants to push the blame game is blaming whoever they think they want to blame but truth of the matter is there are certain factors that go to play uh some successor if you know some success are those who are close to him we wouldn't have won bros in 2016 but this is not a place for me to sing my praise those who know the story one day will write a book or tell the story and talk about the role that i play in that team winning bronze medal when the team was set up when the coach took over it when sasa took that team there was no camp there was no money to open camp we know how it did so i think the same thing happened because i remember seeing uh, imama amapakabo in abuja with his technical crew uh if ladies in the chuku as well as um, um, uh, what's it called? Kennedy Bobori. It wasn't easy for them. So the preparation was tough. And then I think the Mama also made a mistake by depending too much on the foreign base players. But just because our league wasn't good anyway, the home base players were not ready, were not available. So all of that cost it. For the female team, change of coach and, you know, all those last minute problems. And that's the kind of thing that will happen to the Super Eagles if we're not careful if we let General Trail go. But let's leave that to chance. But I don't think that the NFF really needs to take a leave from the NBBF. As a matter of fact, it is the NBBF that needs to take a leave from the NFF because the NFF have medals to show gold, silver, and bronze. 
What medal does the basketball federation have to show of going to the Olympic? What qualifying is one thing. Winning something from the Olympic is another thing. So uh, the holistic view is what I've just given. But in this year, good luck to the Tigers and the Tigers. And let's hope that they perform very well and come back with glory and honor. Not just that we perform well in the group stage and then we got knocked out by a strong team. I mean, Nigeria played against all of the best teams in the world when it comes to football at the Olympics. And we've conquered the beating Argentina before beating Brazil before. So let them also go and do their best and beat America and maybe win a good or a silver it goes. Then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about taking a leaf or not taking a leaf. That's the way I see it. What's the next person? Nice to be here. My name is Henry Johnson. All right, Henry Johnson, what's your question? My question now regarding Asna and Ateta. This issue with every fan of Asna loving this guy, despite since the day when he joined Asna and attended Asna, then attended the CD. So you think say this thing will be like Ole and Mayu matter when their fans know they know they, they are left from their right? Because I recall saying that this same Arsenal, these same fans, Waki Venga, Waki Emery, talk say, what be name? Lumberg na Keteka. Na Ateta come, now all of a sudden, nothing did they wrong. All of them, they Anything it draw, 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 draw. Since it starts, now one win it all get for the all of them they say progress, progress. I mean, I know see the progress. Will. When I select it come ever today, 18th, today the day seventh. When Moreno joined sports, ordinary thought time as I eat them rich. The fight relegation, they see them now. The day I think night's position. That's not the calm. They, Ross, where you see this marriage, the rich? And my question be that. I have another question. It bothers me. It's been bothering me. That is what I'm here to ask. Who is a true pundit? Do you have to play football before you can be a good pundit? Or you just need to study, watch football, read books, and become a good pundit? Because these days, I don't know. Especially all those English ex-players, they just go, maybe Sky Sport, Premier League, just give them a slot. Just go, say whatever they like, and then they don't even care. Sometimes you see the, you see their, their clear sense of bias, the way they talk, the way, they, I don't know, how do you, how, what do you use to judge this person as a good pundit? And this person is just there, like our own Nigeria own self. Sorry to, for mentioning countries' names. Some of us, they just talk. The one that favors them a day. Please, let me undo this. I don't know. I thought they lost. <laughs> Henry Johnson, calm down, calm down, calm down. Ah, the man is really angry. I don't know if you are angry with the pundits or you are angry with the fans because you have a lot of questions that's bordering on Arsenal fans being patient with Ateta and who is a pundit and all that. Let's, uh, let's try to make sense of all of this. First off, on one hand, your anger with pundits is them probably having opinions that doesn't suit you. On the other hand, you want Arsenal fans to go gaga and go crazy or pundits to go crazy on Ateta. So... I would say that you're, on, you're practically contradicting yourself. But let me deal with it from, from the way you asked the question. So let me start from top to bottom. Uh, Michael Ateta, Arsenal was already a terrible team. It's just that uh, the name Arsenal makes people think that they're a big club. They are where they deserve to ensure they are even higher than where they deserve to be this season. And this has been coming. If you follow uh, my comments on Arsenal, Arsenal and Arsene Wenger, I said that if Arsene Wenger gets fired, the coaches that will take over, it will take up to the third or fourth coach for Arsenal to get back to competing terms, especially if the board keeps spending the way they've always been spending. If you notice, you know that time people say that it's as a Wenger that doesn't want to buy players. If you notice, another set of coaches have come, it's the same spending pattern, meaning that it has nothing to do with coach when it comes to spending in a club. And that's what I tried to deal with yesterday's show when I said that... Uh, Buying of players have nothing to do with coach. It is the club. A club have a system where they buy players the way they buy players. Would, would you say the Juventus coach is the one that buy that player? But that's not me answering your question. 
they are patient with Ateta because they all know the problem, especially the Arsenal fans. Those ones who are true, who are honest, those ones who are in England know the problem. Look at the Arsenal first team, for instance, compared to Everton, compared to Tottenham Hotspur. Every player in the Tottenham Hotspur starting eleven will walk straight into the starting eleven of any other team. Harry Kane, Dele Ali, Son Yumin, Lucas Moura, uh, the midfielders, Udombele, Sissoko if his feet, uh, Toby Adewade and the rest of them. Almost all the players in the Tottenham Hotspur first eleven are, are first team players for their national team. Go to Arsenal team. Apart from um, Per America Bomayang, like I said, did not go to the World Cup. The French national team did not even reckon with him. Uh, I can't recall the last time Bellerin played for the Spanish national team. Tierney, I don't know what country he plays for. Uh, David Dewey's is off, up, off and on. You know that his career is already winding down. Uh, what's the other guy? Uh, Socrates, uh, your papa do lost, uh, whatever they call him. That one is also lost in transition. Is it Grenishaka? Or would you put... Uh, uh, Lucas Soria plays for the Uruguay national team. Okay, good. Uh, what of uh, Guendouzi? Guendouzi cannot play in the French national team. Mesut Ozil has been kicked into football exile from the German national team since for, for forever. So if you look at the Arsenal team carefully, you see that they have a bunch of dead wood. Bernard Leno, who's one of the best bright lights of the team, is also not in any of the national team. So that team is dead on arrival. And they look at the people who are starting for Arsenal. Saka, Midland Nice, uh, Nelson. Uh, World Cup, those players will not play in the reserve of the other 19 teams in the prep in the EPL, but then they are starting for Arsenal. That's how bad the Arsenal team is today. So people realize that and they are being patient with uh, Ateta for that reason. But then you go to Tottenham Hotspur, it's a different thing. This is a team that just played the finals of the Champions League last season and lost to Liverpool. The same Liverpool who lost to Real Madrid came back the following season and went all the way to the finals and win it against Tottenham Hotspur. Then you look at uh, Everton. Everton had already signed some good players. They, 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 they put the team together just at the coach previous coach was not doing well. When uh, Duncan Ferguson came in, they also started winning again. Probably the players didn't like the coach. They didn't understand what the coach was doing. So they wanted him out. So now they brought in a new coach. They are winning because they think the coach is doing well. So the situations are different. Now let's go to the pundit thing. People always confuse this thing. Even me, I mean, I get, I get beaten. I, when I was in radio, I never felt like anybody liked me. Like everybody was always against me. Pundits will always say what they need to say. They don't have to suit you because the truth of the matter is in this social media age, you cannot please anybody. Even God, I said something the other day that if Jesus Christ come to this earth this time around, he will not be able to sustain a one-year good friendly relationship with anybody because people can't be pleased. People have just decided not to be pleased and people have also decided not to understand things. A pundit is not a guy who goes on air to praise people. A pundit is someone who objectively and critically analyze situations. Are they going to be sentimental about it? Yes. Are they going to be emotional about it? Yes. Why don't you ask yourself this question? Why does Sky Sports put ex-players of a club in the match that their team is playing? You know why? Because they want that to happen. Uh, media today has changed. Media is not about the fans, about connecting to the fans. And most times when you say good things, when you say sweet things, the fans don't connect. So you need to say these controversial things, you need to say this deep truth, hard and bitter truth for the fans to connect. Yeah, it, it, people might not like it, but it is what brings out the click. And that's how these people get paid. Don't forget that <laughs> the contract they sign is very huge. It's close to footballers' contract. How does Sky Sports pay all those money if People are not put in the place where they need to get controversial, get a lot of clicks and a lot of talking points to come out of what the pundits are doing. So that's the reason why that happened. If you ask me, I'll tell you, watch the ones you like. Most times what I do is I watch the football game. I can analyze it myself. When it's time for halftime, I put it off. Then there are some analysts who I really love to listen to and write, for instance, a few other ones like that. Once they are on air, uh, Graham Sonnes on occasionally, but right now I, I don't think I like to listen to him. And the Townsend... I listen to them, but if they are not on air, for schools, Gary Neville, I just play music. Second half comes in, and I watch. That's the advice I give to you. But saying that they don't know what they are doing or they are biased, that's your opinion, and you are entitled to it. The same way they are entitled to their own opinion. All right, it's still the Talking Point Show on Elegota TV and Elegota TV with you. Now, I'll need to push further down the road and talk to someone else. Okay, Larry from Igondo, what do you have to say? Hello. Elegbete TV Radio. My name is Larry from uh, Igodo. Please, I would like to ask this question concerning Manchester United. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as a coach, 
um, we've seen how the results he has churned out this season. Um, it has been ups and downs, and um, I'm beginning to wonder. You know, it begs for these questions: that is it that Oligona Sosha is bereft of ideas, or is it that he lacks the tactical know-how to move this? um manchester team from the level they are right now to the level they are expected to be or are we can we say that the players in manchester united are not really playing for this coach because um the, the results are not showing any improvement at all so i would like you to to shine more light on this and um you just let me answer these questions from igondo uh olegon as a coach has he done well and the funny thing is the quick fire way olegon Asoja started when he was still interim coach you know makes me wonder what happened thereafter i can't say but let's fast forward let's not keep dwelling on the past let's fast forward i think that Manchester United got into the same kind of rut that Arsenal were in. In the last days of Silas Ferguson, I think he didn't prepare for his exit, as in prepared the entire team for his exit. And then with the arrival of Glazer, the directory, the structure of the club did not fit it. You know, let's not forget that under Silas Ferguson, they have a, a certain David Gill, just the same way in the first 10 years of Arsene Wenger, he worked with a certain David Dean, who is a football man through and through who understand football, who know how to negotiate for contract, who know how to spot the best players and bring them in. Uh, uh, Ed Woodward, on the other hand, is a proper, 100% complete businessman. I mean, he can get you sponsors. He can walk into uh, some of the best uh, executive offices and talk about sponsorship and all that. But he still doesn't understand football. So that affects him a bit. But I think Manchester United are already preparing for the next coach. He might be Massimiliano Allegri, Diego Simone from Atletico Madrid or Mauricio Pochettino, who is the available one, the odds on favorite right now to take the job. That's the reason why maybe they didn't sign the Ireland guy who went to Dortmund. Because I don't see any reason why they shouldn't have signed him. He's a good goal scorer, he's cheap at 20 million euro, he's young, he's everything that they, they should be needed. But I think that there was too much of the hand of Oligona Socha around that guy. He's a protege of Oligona Socha. He's a dad fan of Oligona Socha. Oligona Socha is his mentor and all that. So they felt they want to bring in a coach that will not be reporting. They want to bring in a player, sorry, that will not be reporting to Oligona Socha when Oligona Socha is out of the team because I think Manchester United is planning already for post uh, uh, Oligona Socha. That's the reason why they brought in uh, Igalo up front and if you look at the uh, bruno fernandez i think that they spoke to whoever the I, I think manchester united already have a coach that they want they spoke to whoever the, they are speaking to and the person have agreed that he will work with bruno fernandez so they brought in odio igalo short term knowing that at the end of the season they will get in their favorite like it might be timo vana it might be somebody else i don't know but Let's just leave Oligon Asocha the way he is and hope that between now and the end of the season, it will get them into the top form. Chelsea really are not looking in the best of form, are not looking very, very consistent. So they can be knocked off that. If Manchester United makes the top four, a new coach comes in who will be able to handle the UEFA Champions League. That's my thoughts about it. But I think Oligon Asocha has done the best within what he's had. He's dealt with injuries, dealt with players, revolt, he's dealt with a whole lot of things, and he's been able to handle it better than even Jose Mourinho in his last year at Manchester United. So let's give him some some chance and see what comes out on that let's go to our final caller on the show today hello elect better tv radio god bless you for the wonderful opportunity given to the fans to have a say on the elect better tv radio program my own question is what is your opinion concerning Manchester united this present generation know very much that my United have won many, many laurels before Alex Fagusi retired. And the post Alex Fagusi retirement is still on team Manchester United as a team. Uh, we brought uh, Luis Van Gaal and uh, Oshie Murillo, but the league is not be able to attain. Now, Olegana uh, Shosha has come to the aim of a fear of, of the team. Do you think Manchester United are on the right path to keep 
the coach up to this present time. What is your opinion concerning Paul Pogba and the team? Do you think he should go or he should leave? And many people have been criticizing the executive vice chairman Ed Woodward concerning the transfer policy. What do you think that the team can do in order to attract good players that will make many players, many good players to choose Manchester United over other team? God bless you. Okay, all right, my brother, you didn't mention your name but, and location, but let me try and uh, address the things that you've mentioned. Every generation of footballers will be different. The way we attack this generation of footballers, we make it look like, yeah, football has changed, football has evolved. But we as fans should also evolve our mind and come to the reality of today. Because if we keep looking back at yesterday, we might as well just die and let the generation of today continue with where they are. Uh, because the old folks, uh, you know, it's like in the political era where people tell you in 1974, uh, Mercedes Benz was selling for two naira. Uh, those people are saying they don't have, they don't have ten Mercedes Benz. They did buy a lot of it. They did, you know, so it's it's the same thing. This generation came into a Manchester United that was sliding off a cliff. You don't just get into a cart that is sliding off a cliff and then you think you can just fix it. You either let it land or you jump off the the the, the bus with your parachute, if you have a parachute, and they hope that you will start afresh. And to start afresh takes a lot of time. Manchester United came a, an era, a dynasty came to an end with the exit of Silas Ferguson. New owners, new structure, uh, uh, Glazers came in, the structure changed, just the same way Asna is suffering that same thing too, with new owners, new structure, trying to build again. Manchester United fans need to be patient. They need to understand that for a very long time, they dominated English football and other people were watching. They should also learn to watch while others dominate. A time will come where they will find their foot again. Look at Liverpool now. It's a very good lesson to learn from Liverpool. So, Manchester United are going into that rebuilding process. It's not just a one-bedroom. When you're building a one-bedroom or a bungalow or a duplex, you can take six months, one one year at most and you're done but when you're building a skyscraper when you're building a dome when you're building something magisterial something very very big it takes time so what Manchester United is doing is shopping and pruning they will make mistake along the line like letting Lukaku go they are building for the next generation they are setting up the structure gradually eventually the wheel will go full circle and start spinning and become productive again the test that the first needs to do is to be patient. Edward Ward, you can say he's not the best when it comes to maybe football negotiations and all that, but you should also give Edward Ward some credit. In the history of Manchester United, I don't think that there's anybody who's tied in more sponsorship, brought in more money through the banks like Ed Woodward have done. So what is lacked in the area of signing of players, negotiation with agents and all that, is also done very well in the area of bringing in funding to Manchester United. So uh, there is an imbalance to things, but it's a gradual process. And if you look at this team right now, like I said earlier on to the previous caller, Manchester United are turning a corner. At the end of this season, you would have had Harry Maguire as your captain going forward, like a Steve Bruce kind of captain. You would have had uh, uh, Juan Bissaka. Your, your, your defense line is complete. The one place where you have a major problem is in the midfield. If you let Pogba go, you get to somebody else. You have Fernando, uh, Bruno Fernandes already. You have a few other players in that midfield. That will be taken care of. Then up front, there's Rashford. The Manchester United is definitely going by one or two strikers at the end of the season. And then maybe they might let Antonio Martial go. So if you get a full team, a full squad that is ready to play as a unit. Manchester United would be back again. The, the, the situation with Manchester United is not as worse as the situation with Arsenal or even Chelsea right now as the case may be. But I think that given time, they would find their, their feet again. And Woodward also needs to take a decision of saying, look, I'm going to be the guy who bring in the money. Let somebody else be responsible for bringing in the players, negotiating for the players. Like the way you have Agnelli in Juventus, why he's got his own team working with him, and then Ed Woodward will be the one issuing the check. So once they come out, they come out with a transfer budget for the season and say, this is for the summer or the winter window, this is the budget we have. So you guys go and do with it whatever you want to do. They work with their scouts, work with agents that they can speak to and get all these things in. In the days of Silas Ferguson, it was a different thing. Silas Ferguson had clout, he was bigger, he could call anybody. It could speak to any agent, but that's not the situation today. And then the football market has also, the transfer market has also gone berserk. 
once you mention Manchester United, a player that is worth 20 million automatically becomes 100 million because you know that Manchester United is desperate. Uh, things are very, very bad. If they are scouting for you, it means that they need you to come fix a problem. There was a time where Manchester United is signing you because you, it, it will automatically upgrade you. You work a little, and then the collective work of other great stars in the team will make you great. But right now, anybody coming into Manchester United is a case of what can you add? What value can you bring? And that's the, the, the thing with Manchester United. So people need to understand that and be patient because they are building something big to try and emulate what Silas Ferguson did from 1992 up until the time he stepped out of the scene. But either way, I think that for clubs like Arsenal, Manchester United, even Chelsea, patience should be your thing. As well as Barcelona, AC Milan, and maybe Paris Saint-Germain, patience should be your thing. And hope that you get the right coach and the right group of players that will crystallize at the same time so that you go back to winning again. Like I always say, time flies when we're having fun and we're exhausted for time today. Uh, we cannot go further than this, but thank you to everybody who's been part of the show and to my wonderful producer, the amazing McDonald, Chikwe Maker, Oparocha. Yeah, fantastic work you're doing and the rest of the Elegota TV and Elegota TV radio crew that's made this happen. Thanks to the fans out there. Thank you. There's something I always love to say. No matter the, the pyramid of problems that we have or the, the things that are happening around you, always be the guy in the room who is offering solution. Don't be the guy who's causing chaos. That's how I leave you. I remain Idafi, Matthew, Esiogene. They call me the Elevator One of Sports. Thank you.